Hi, <clears throat> this is video tutorial number four, Presets and Attributes for Art 1383. Our patcher, as we saved it last time, uh, will be perfect for demonstrating and moving forward in this class. And But before we do, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So the patcher's unlocked, and this is how you select things, and you just hit the delete button and they go away. These are things that you've all learned already. And then I'm going to select this entire thing, and then just drag it over here in a convenient location. So what we're going to learn about today is attributes and the presets. Attributes are nice because they control the things that the inspector controlled before. Um, you may recall that we changed this slider by going over here to the inspector. Hello inspector. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't select it. There we go. And we changed the background color and we could change it to something else. Maybe something a little pinker. Do we like pink today? Are we in the mood for that? And the border color will make it a nice purple or something. Okay. So that's what we did with the, I think that's much better looking by the way. That's what we did with the inspector, but there's other, there's another way to do it. And so put your mouse somewhere in the middle of your workspace, have your patcher unlocked, type the letter N by itself and type A T T and you should see a TRUI inspect attributes object here. Just double click on it and there it is. And if you look at it, as you can see, it says none right now. And um, what we'll do, whoops, couldn't, couldn't move it as I wanted to. Um, we're going to try this out on our beautiful blinking button. Does everybody like how my patch cords are going here? You notice how nicely they they uh, follow what I'm doing? Up here at the top, if you click Options, try Segmented Patch Cords. I like it a lot better than the stretchy ones. The only thing that you need to know is when you're doing sub segmented patch cords and you suddenly realize, oh, I didn't make my other object yet, and then you can't get rid of it because you're like, okay, well, I'll just click, and then they're stuck, and then you're like, oh, how do I get rid of this? Uh, no matter where I click, I can't get rid of it except to connect it to something, which is... Anyway, if you need to get rid of it, just push Command, which is the that four-leafed apple sign, and click, and it disappears. So segmented patch cords, I like them because it keeps everything neat. Back to what we were doing. So lock the patcher down and you'll notice that nothing can now be changed to something. Let's try the blink color. Okay, so we have blink color showing here and we have yellow. Let's turn the metronome on so that um, and we'll make it go a little bit faster. Let's say a third of a second approximately. Okay, and then we have to hit this button, as you might remember. Okay, so this attributes um, box controls the blink color, and all you have to do is click over here, you get the little wheel, and then you can change it. And so there it is, change to another color. I like that better. No, I like that better. I don't know, I don't know. Could you perhaps have something that changed the blink color for you? Yes, you, oh, look at that, periwinkle, periwinkle. Um, yes, you could. Um, what uh, the, if you unlock your patcher, you'll notice that there's a messages in box. And one of the things that we could use to send a message to the attribute, I'm gonna move it out here so it's easier to access, is another object, click out here, where nothing's going on, type the letter N, and type in there swatch. And the magical swatch appears, and let's put that above 
blink color. If you connect the left outlet of the swatch to the blink color, you will notice if you lock your patcher that now you can control it with the swatch, which is a very nice thing to be able to do. Okay, and now I'm going to make the next dramatic leap to, let's leave that, if you wanted to do more than one thing, um, you could either make two of these attribute controllers, or you could, I'm going to unlock again, and let's just say that I decided I wanted to hook this up to the top of my slider. Okay, now what happens over here is you get these stripy lines. That means that blink color is not an option that both of these have. The slider doesn't blink, so it doesn't have a blink color attribute. And since you have it hooked to two things, it can only show you the attributes that are the same. So we could pick background color instead, and then we could coordinate our controls here in such a nice way. Isn't that fancy? So that's fabulous. Now, um, if you still want to have control over the other colors, what you could do, unlock your patcher, select these two, now that you have them as a group, push the option key so that you're going to copy them and move them, right? I'm going to move one up here to go to the slider, and I'm going to move one Oh, oops. Well, I can, I can reconnect them. I somehow didn't manage to get both of them. I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, reconnecting these, reconnecting these. Okay. Now if we lock our patcher down, this one says background color, so obviously this one can say something else. Let's scroll down here and say outline color. Uh, no, we like blink color, right? Well, it's already got a weird blink. Uh, let's say outline color. So now we can change our outline color to something fantastic. Hmm. A nice theme. There we go. Something very calming. And then up here, since we already have a background color feeding into the slider from here, we'll choose the border color. And now we mouse around a little bit and we set it to the exact same thing <laughs> so that. Uh, Now, I just realized something funny, which is if you always wanted these two things to be coordinated, but you know that they don't, like, this doesn't have a, this has outline color, not border color, and this has border color, not outline color, you could unlock your uh, patch and just connect one swatch. to two things. Goodbye swatch. And now blocking the patcher, when you move this around it controls both of those because the the swatch is sending out um, I, I believe it's a, a three number list. So now we can keep these nicely coordinated. Um, now before I get completely lost in in my interior design I want to introduce another object. I'm going to unlock the patcher here, type the letter N, and start typing preset until I don't have to type it anymore because it pops up. Here's the preset object, and I'm going to move it up here so that we can take a look at it. And what the preset object does is it stores values in each one of these little circles. 
Now there's very specific things that it can and cannot store. So I will show you what it can store and what it can't. So here's one thing that it can. It can, you attach it to the top of an object and it can store the numerical values that are stored in here. And it can store, for example, the numerical values in this slider, which we might want to do. Um, what it cannot store is the color of, of something by just touching it. And I'll show you that very quickly here. Let's lock the patcher very quickly and we'll click on number one. There's nothing there. Now, uh, let's set this at something that we can remember. Well, a thousand. We can, two thousand. We can remember two thousand, right? So there's two thousand. I go up here, I push the shift key and I click on it, right? And then I set it down to approximately a thousand. There it is, a thousand. And I go to number two, shift, click. Now, since I've changed that, this preset remembers the two thousand. This preset remembers the one thousand. That's really handy. Um, if I change the colors, let's make it something we can remember. Blue and red, and we'll do like orange and green on the other one, okay? So I'm going to shift click on this. And I'll go back to the first one. And then I'm going to set, what did I say? Pink and green? Pink and green, just so we can keep them straight. And shift click on that one. So now we have 2000 over here. We're on the first one, so that's 2000. This is pink, this is green. So far everything looking good. Now we go to number two, which should have been red and blue, and you notice that this one didn't change. This one stayed pink, this stayed pink, and this stayed pink. Even though the preset was connected to this, it remembered what the numerical value was in it, but it didn't remember what color it was. It can only remember the numerical value in the swatch, which then puts out a color. So if you want this thing to remember that color that's in there, you have to have the, you have to have it remember the swatch that's controlling it. And that's this swatch here, which we didn't connect to it. So I'm going to unlock and I'm going to come down here and connect to, um, to that swatch. And now when we click on, whoops, lock it down, click on number one, we get our 2000, we get our bright green, we've got our pink here, and now I'm going to shift click so I can keep that, shift click. A good habit is to always go fully to the next click. Don't just shift click on it or you'll save all the wrong values. Now we go to this other one. This goes down to 1000. This one jumps to blue, but this one hasn't jumped to red, which is what we wanted, right? Let's just say. And so now we go back and we shift click on number two. So that's it. The preset. And the color swatch maybe we'll do something more extreme for this one and call it and uh, a different setting here and we'll call that shift 
click number three. So one, two, three. Looks nice. So that's it for the preset, the color swatch, the attributes, and I'll talk more to you soon. Remember, presets and attributes. Patch well. Bye-bye.